It's Tuesday, February 12th. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel, and I'm Baja Fresh, just back from that Baja vacation, and everybody's demanding a Northern California weather and reservoir update. We've got a lot of fresh snow in the high Sierra from these last series of storms, very cold storms, over eight inches of snow right here on the Blanco Lirio World Headquarters at about 3,200 feet at Banner Mountain outside of Nevada City. The high Sierra has over 15 feet of snow. At one point during these series of storms, the Sierra received 48 inches, four feet of snow in a 24 hour period. So the current snowpack in the Sierra looks great. We'll have the official snow recorders out here in a couple weeks to check the water content on that and see how this snowpack currently uh, compares to average. The reservoirs in Northern California are in great shape overall. Of course, Oroville Reservoir, because of the construction there, is still quite low. Currently, the reservoir level is just under 740 feet. That leaves almost 100 feet of space that that reservoir needs to fill before it even gets to its uh, flood control level, just under 850 feet. Remember, that's been modified for the construction by about only about 15 feet difference. So despite all the rain and snowfall we've had here, Oroville is in great shape. Work continues on the emergency spillway buttress wall, and work continues on just some minor trim up uh, and uh, backfilling operations in the main spillway. But that main spillway is ready to spill if it's needed to. The emergency spillway hopefully will never be used again. Now what's shaping up with this weather is what brings me to my next subject that I want to discuss today, the new spillway at the new Bullards Bar Dam and Reservoir right here in Yuba County on the Nevada County border. Last December I was invited down by the Yuba Water Agency after all the time I spent reporting on the Oroville Dam spillway failure and rebuild. The Yuba Water Agency invited me down for a personal tour of the entire facility at Bullard's Bar Dam and Reservoir and talk about their new project to add an additional new redundant second spillway to the Bullard's Bar Dam complex. And it's weather just like this where a second spillway is going to come into play. With warming temperatures we get a series of cold fronts here in the Sierra, dumping a ton of snow, and now we've got a warm front approaching from Hawaii, an atmospheric river, a fire hose that they tend to just hose down the Sierra with very warm, uh, large amounts of rain and can cause massive melting runoff of snowfall that we need to, would rather like to keep preserved in the Sierra over the winter time, and that can cause flooding concerns downstream. Reservoirs throughout the state are adopting uh, uh, design engineering of adding an additional redundant spillway which allows operators to spill out ahead of a storm and make way for a warm flashing runoff from the high Sierra because of advances in weather reporting and snow depth and water quantity reporting. A second spillway located lower than the original spillway will allow operators greater control of flood control levels in our reservoirs. Bullard's Bar Reservoir is another vital link of the California aqueduct system located just south of Oroville Reservoir in the Yuba River watershed. Oroville Reservoir controls the Feather River watershed. Bullard's Bar controls the North Fork of the Yuba River watershed. And to the south, the American River watershed is controlled by Folsom Reservoir. Here in the Yuba watershed, only the North Fork has flood control via the new Bullard's Bar Dam. The Middle Fork and South Fork have no flood control dams in place, only pass-through dams, as Inglebright Dam is only a pass-through dam and does not provide flood protection. Bullard's Bar Dam, with a crest of 1,965 feet in elevation, is a structural concrete structure 645 feet tall and nearly 2,300 feet long. The concrete spillway is controlled by three radial arm tainter gates and is a flip tail or ski jump sort of design where the water is flipped up and down into competent bedrock below, thus preventing head cutting erosion like what plagued Oroville spillway when it failed. 
The bottom of this main spillway is at 1,902 feet in elevation, giving operators just 63 feet or so of flood control at Bullard's Bar. Since this is a structural concrete dam, the dam itself is the emergency spillway. And the dam here at Bullard's Bar has never yet been overtopped. Flood control, of course, is the primary purpose of this dam, especially after the devastating floods in 1955, which provided the incentive to build the new Bullard's Bar Dam. Water conservation for drinking water and irrigation throughout the state is second, followed by recreation. And most of this has been paid for by the generation of electricity from the Colgate Powerhouse located just five miles downstream. A five-mile-long tunnel, 14-foot in diameter, runs two huge Pelton wheel turbines producing 340 megawatts of electricity. And let's go meet the folks and discuss the new spillway that's going to be built at New Bullard's Bar. What do you think, Chewy? Hmm? Then maybe we'll get a little dirt ride in afterwards. Yeah, you wanna go riding, Chewy? You wanna go riding? Come on, Chewy, let's go. It's everybody here. All right, well, I found the Yuba County uh, Agency officials here. This is starting with Willie. Willie Whittlesey, yeah, project manager, Yuba Water Agency, correct. Project manager, Dee Dee. Dee Dee Cordell, communications manager. Yeah, great. <laughs> Maury Miller, Operations Manager. First, a bit of history and the critical role that PG&E played in the development of the entire new Bullard's Bar Dam project. So Bullard's Bar was originally developed, well, there was a voter bond in, in town, and then uh, PG&E money was also used to help develop Bullard's Bar? Yeah, so uh, there are revenue bonds um, to use to construct the project, the mm -hmm. entire project, and P the contract with PG&E, the power purchase agreement, is what was used to pay off the revenue bonds. In addition to that, PG&E paid for operations and maintenance and betterments for the 50 years of the power purchase agreement, which ended in um, 2016. Mm -hmm. And in in return for their their pawn payments and the operations and maintenance costs, PG&E got the the power for free. Mm -hmm. And now that's turned over to you guys, the Yuba Water. Yeah, correct. So um, it, the power purchase agreement had a term of 50 years. It expired mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. um, uh, well, we start. We took over on May 1st in mm -hmm. 2016. And that's where we took control of the operations and maintenance and scheduling and selling of the power. Now, is it because the, of this change of command, so to speak, uh, ownership that allows you to do improvements like like the proposed or the like the new spillway that you're going to put in? Yeah, uh, revenues from our hydro generation mm -hmm. uh, will be used mm -hmm. for the secondary spillway. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. It, it, it's not necessarily a uh, facility that is used for power generation. It's for flood control right. and dam safety. Your new spillway. Yeah, that's correct, right. the secondary spillway. Right. So Dee Dee's got a good clarification on, on the ownership of things around here. <laughs> so we've always owned it. The water, Yuba Water Agency. Yes, Yuba Water Agency has always owned the the entire project, mm -hmm. but uh, PG&E was responsible for it basically, and they, they called the shots and they got the power mm -hmm. while they were paying for the mortgage, so to speak. Mm -hmm. right. And as long as they were paying the, the bonds off, they had control, mm -hmm. but we were the ones that actually owned it. And then in 2016, we, we took over control again when the agreement ended. So you got, were you always sense? in charge of the whole management of the thing or was it in, with you and PG&E in the past as far as managing? Yeah. So, so it was in cooperation with PG&E. Yeah. Yeah. PG&E mm -hmm. um, supplied the budget for operations and maintenance. So mm -hmm. there, there, there had to be you know, a partnership in mm -hmm. how, um, you know how we spent money in um, operating, maintaining, and, and improving the facilities. Um, so PG&E did have a say in that, and they also had a say in well, they had the whole say in how the the power was scheduled and mm -hmm. and marketed. Mm -hmm. Now Dee Dee's going to help explain some of the additional water inputs into Bullard's Bar. There's a lot more to Bullard's Bar than just the <laughs> dam, and uh, Dee Dee here's got the story. Back in the 70s, when they built this, it. First off, it grabs water from obviously the North Fork of the Yuba River, but what are the other structures that 
get water from the Middle Fork in Oregon Creek. Yeah, so we have off of uh, the Middle Yuba, we have our house dam, which is just a small diversion dam. And then off of Oregon Creek, we have Log Cabin Dam. Mm -hmm. And that's another little diversion dam. And they send the water into New Bullard's Bar, where it's captured and stored behind New Bullard's Bar Dam. And from there, it goes through the tunnel, which is about five miles long, mm -hmm. over to New Colgate Powerhouse, where we use it to generate electricity. And then is Englebright part of the whole structure as well, or is that a separate? So Englebright is owned by the Army Corps of Engineers, mm -hmm. but we have Narrows 2 Powerhouse, and we're in the process of buying Narrows 1. Correct. Uh, we, we haven't quite closed the deal on that yet, which is uh, currently owned by PG&E, right? Yep. So and those two are both beneath Englebright Dam, so we do generate a little bit of power off of Narrows 2. Now Will's going to explain some of the operational characteristics of the new spillway design, as well as the history of how this design came about. So the inspiration for this new or additional spillway addi allows additional control over the reservoir. The inspiration was the, part of the inspiration was the floods of 1997. Yeah, we had a major flood in 1986, and mm -hmm. then we had a flood in 1997, and we commissioned a study to determine what could be done mm -hmm. to um, uh, provide more flood control protection. Mm -hmm. And so the idea with this spillway, this new spillway, the entry is going to be above or below the existing spillway gates. So the the entry of the spillway will be 31 and a half feet lower in elevation mm -hmm. than the existing primary spillway. Will the new spillway be a gated spillway? Yes, it'll be a gated spillway, but mm -hmm. the gates will be underwater, mm -hmm. um, completely underwater, um, unlike the uh, the current primary spillway. All right. And one of the other designs you considered was raising the uh, size of the dam here at Bullard's Bar. Yeah, one of the alternatives considered mm -hmm. in the study was raising the dam 10 feet mm -hmm. and to provide an additional 50,000 acre feet of dedicated flood space. Mm -hmm. um, the environmental consequences and the overall cost of that um, weren't didn't provide the benefit then that the secondary spillway did. Mm -hmm. So that one out in the design. And Bullard's Bar, of course, is a concrete structure. So uh, as far as an emergency spillway, the top of the dam is an emergency spillway here. That's correct. The the top of the dam is the emergency spillway, so if there ever was an issue and the dam was overtopped, it's designed to flow straight over the concrete dam. And that's never happened here at Bullard's That's Bar. never happened, yeah. correct. Yeah. And what's the capacity of the existing spillway? Maury, help me out with that one. 160,000. 160, and that's, gets, doesn't that bump up to the limits downstream too of what the levees can handle? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, this existing spillway um, is kind of a ski jump affair, and it dumps down onto competent bedrock down below? Yes, it's got a flip bucket at the end uh -huh. and then it, and it cascades down the hill down to the river down below. And the existing spillway gates, what do you, what kind of gates are those? Tain tainer? Tainer gates. Yeah. And they're, what does that mean? They they're, they're a, they they have a hinge point on the back mm -hmm. and they're radial, so mm -hmm. they, they, they have an arch on them as, mm -hmm. they, as they go up and down. And that's, they're electrically operated yeah. from yeah. the grid and then they typically have a emergency backup Yes, electrical yes, power. We've got, yeah, a couple different alternative sources. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was a big issue at Orville, but yeah, they fired up the emergency generators, I guess, and were able to go just fine. So why does uh, back to the new spillway? Why does the new spillway at 31 feet below the existing spillway add additional flood protection? So basically, the um, the storage above. The elevation of the of the secondary spillway, the proposed secondary spillway, um, there's more operational space above that elevation, which allows us to evacuate water when we see um, when we forecast storms gotcha. coming in. Mm -hmm. So let's just say we had uh, a major snowpack in the Sierras upstream of New Bullard's Bar, mm -hmm. and we saw a, a warm rain event come mm -hmm. coming in. We could begin to evacuate significant amount significant amount of water earlier than uh, the alternative, which would be to uh, let the reservoir fill up to the elevation of our current spillway gotcha. and then start releasing water. We're basically limited by um, our ability to release water at lower elevations. What's the um, top elevation of this reservoir? Uh, 1955. And what's the uh, spillway gate elevation for the original existing spillway? 1902. 1902. So you only got 50 some odd feet of control space in the existing That's design. Right. And That's now right. you're gonna add 30 additional feet and uh, You'll be able to get to that water a lot quicker. That's right. And so, in a changing climate, you can 
uh, effectively gain greater control of the reservoir. Got yeah. it. That yep. makes total sense. Yeah. It does require a change of the water control manual, so we'll be working on that with uh, right. the Corps of Engineers over the next few years. Yeah, as you well. got to redesign the whole operations plan for the spillway. Yeah. And will that change your uh, flood? What do they call it? The the flood level, the 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 level that you keep the reservoir throughout the different times of the year. Yeah, it'll it, it, yeah dramatically change that. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which in turn should give you, like you say, additional water storage That's right. capability as well. That's yeah, it great. works both ways. Yeah, yeah, great. And in addition to all the benefits we just described, uh, this secondary spillway will allow you redundancy so that if you had an event similar to what happened in Oroville, uh, you, got a, uh, you got another option here. That's correct. The current design of the dam is that if there is an emergency um, flood event, that the dam can withstand flows directly over the dam. Mm -hmm. And after we build the secondary spillway, we'll have a redundant spillway right. system, and we can use either the primary or the secondary spillway to evacuate water in the event of a flood emergency at the dam. Right. For example, if your main existing old time spillway broke down or the gates broke down, you could use the new spillway. Yes, and that's correct. Uh, well, what's the new spillway going to be rated for as far as? Uh, We'll do some quick math. 45,000 cubic feet. There we go. 45,000 cubic feet per second. <laughs> so a maximum, a maximum of 45,000 cubic feet per second for the new tunnel spillway. Right. Just mm -hmm. for the new the right. new spillway. In addition to the uh, 160, but you, operationally, you want to keep it below 160,000 CFS for folks downstream. Right. 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 Remember, operational limits are much different than design limits and operational limits take into account the needs of folks downstream. Historically, the most Bullard's Bar spillway has ever spilled is about 50,000 CFS. At the confluence of the Yuba River and Feather River in the Marysville, Yuba City area, the maximum allowable CFS is about 300,000. As a series of levees protect the cities located below the water level. So when the Oroville spillway failed, operators at Bullard's Bar had to quickly respond to it to not exceed any of these operational limitations and protect the levees located below the confluence of the Feather and Yuba Rivers. The secondary spillway could by itself handle a storm the size of 1997. Mm -hmm. So we have, it's a, it itself. is a serious backup. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. uh, what, what did you... Uh... What are you currently estimating on the cost for this project? Uh, 160 million, but it's very early. We are still in the design phase, so I'm sure that we'll have a much more clear number once we get to the other side of that. What kind of uh, time frame are we looking at um, for this project? About two years for design and, um, mm -hmm. and permitting, mm -hmm. and um, two, two to two and a half, and mm -hmm. then two years to construct, so we're thinking within five years we could have a completed spillway. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah. And as far as paying for it, again, we're looking at a primarily from the electrical power produced here, but you've got other options available too, possibly, huh, that you're looking at? Yes, I mean, ideally we would get state and federal funding. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll seek grants from anybody and everybody who's willing to give us some extra funding to help mm -hmm. pay for it. Mm -hmm. But um, but we are in a position where that's our primary responsibility is to reduce flood risk for the people of Yuba County. So yep. if we need to invest the hydropower money to, to build it ourselves, then that's, I guess, what we'd have to do. The folks at the Yuba Water Agency have a lot of additional responsibilities, including the health of the forests in the watershed, and check out how this ties into wildfire management and prevention. Oh, water, <laughs> water gets deep. I mean, it's much more than just water, yeah. uh, what you're impacting here. And with the recent changeover from PG&E to straight to the Yuba Water Agency, you're, you've got a lot of funds available to you. So let's go through some of these slides real quick and, oh. and, and see sure. what all the different programs are. So a big thing, of course, is the levees uh, downstream. So you're, this is funding the slurry wall improvements on the levees downstream? Yeah, we, we paid for uh, the Feather River setback levy through a lot of the revenue that we've, we've taken in. Uh, we've also helped invest in the Marysville Ring levy. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we, we do a lot of other public safety related investment. So this was, we gave $100,000 to Dobbins Oregon Firehouse for a water tender truck. Theirs mm -hmm. was like built in 1972 or something like that and it really needed to be replaced. So we're finding a lot of ways wherever we can um, make a connection to our mission areas. We try to invest 
Um, we've got a lot going on related to forest health, and the environment, and watershed protection. This is a, the Blue Forest Project is a new project we just launched that's um, a pilot project, a proof of concept, if you will, to um, help get some of the forest fuels out of the forest. And, um, and it's, it's a creative project that we're hoping will work beautifully that we'll tell you lots about. So you're able to take, well, you're big on, on this too. Yeah. You're able to take water money and um, put it towards uh, improvement or reduction of fuel loading in the in your watershed right. mm -hmm. which will in turn improve your water quality here yeah, right that's water quality and quantity mm -hmm. yes brilliant excellent and that's called what blue the blue, blue forest, forest pilot project yeah on, there's on our website um, mm -hmm. there's a page for it that okay. really describes it there's a cool video that explains how the bond funding works for mm -hmm. it um, mm -hmm. which was really helpful to me because I am just not a finance major um, there's a reason I was a communications major <laughs> um, we also do a lot for fisheries improvement mm -hmm. and this is um, our river management team we spend about five hundred fifty thousand dollars a year on fisheries habitat enhancement mm -hmm. um, and a science program to really study and make sure that we're doing the best thing we can for the fish we invest in the fish in the classroom program, which is adorable. Um, <laughs> and we have uh, Arctic chillers in the classroom where the kids get to raise fish and then they take them out. We pay for the buses to take them out on a field trip to release the fish. And mm -hmm. they're so cute. They all talk to the fish before they release them and <laughs> say, good names. luck, don't get eaten. It's yeah. really cute. Um, we do, we're just starting a lot of community outreach activities to really uh, connect more with the community because basically for the last 60 years, nobody knew who we were or mm -hmm. what we did. And now because we are trying to make such a big difference in the community, we're getting out there a lot more and, and trying to, to touch them and make sure they understand who we are and what we do. But we are looking for um, and, and brainstorming with other, you know, kind of movers and shakers in the community to figure out what are those things that we can do that are really going to make a big difference. Our goal is to take this hydropower revenue and invest it back in Yuba County mm -hmm. in a way that's going to improve the quality of life for the people who live in Yuba County and work in Yuba County and visit Yuba County. I mean, <laughs> It's, I, I'm really excited about it. It's yeah. why I took the job because I want to make this difference. I grew up in Yuba County yeah. and I, I wanted to help make it better. And, um, and it's really exciting to be part of something where we can make a change like that. So. Excellent. Thanks, Didi. Now let's go take a look and see where this new spillway is going to go and take a tour underneath the Bullards Bar Dam. So that's the existing spillway. Um, you got uh, three gates there? Three tanner gates, and then right below us, right here, Will, is where the uh, the new spillway is going to go. The tunnel. Yeah, the entry to the new spillway will be just below us here. Uh huh. And then it's going to shoot right on through that mountain right there, and then uh, have a uh, flip bucket style, and then onto the rocks below and back into the Yuba River. That's right. And what sort of gates are you going to run in this in this new spillway? I think these are supposed to be uh, just flat gates. They're, they won't be radial. Okay. And uh, you had uh, Tabor Drilling did drilling recently, and the results from that came out good? Yeah, the re results came out as expected, and mm -hmm. now we're uh, in the initial phases, uh, phases of design of the, uh, the spillway itself. Great. And here's where the new spillway will pop out on the Yuba River side, just to the right of and a little bit below the existing spillway. So because... Uh, this is critical infrastructure. There's certain parts where still, even to this day, uh, they're, they're not allowed to photograph. So we're gonna go down and take a look at the bottom of the dam, but I gotta turn the cameras off. We'll tell you all about it. <laughs> so we'll be able to go inside the dam here and access a galley that takes you into the bedrock right there behind me. We're deep in the dam here at Bullard's Bar. This is an exploratory tunnel built into the side of the mountain here to make sure that the competent bedrock, well, the bedrock is competent, there's no big fissures in here where the dam attaches to the mountainside below. And check out all this quartz in here. There ain't no gold. <laughs> I looked. <laughs> but this is way cool down in here. Even though it looks pretty dry here, you can hear the water trickling in the previous clip. All dams leak by design, and that needs to be drained. And at Bullard's Bar, that drainage amount is carefully measured and kept track of for any significant changes, especially after something like an event such as an earthquake. Also, vertical wires are strung through small vertical tubes and monitored for any deformation in the shape of the compound complex curve of the dam. 
in the event of an earthquake. The base of the dam also features a low level water outlet system to keep this short two mile section of river filled with water above the confluence of the Middle Fork as the discharge from the Colgate powerhouse is located some five miles downstream. And Willie, you had another point about um, another reason for the new spillway here was the fact that a big portion of this project never got built, the Marysville Dam? Yeah, Marysville Reservoir at, uh, you know, just upstream of the Highway 20 crossing of uh, the Yuba River or Parks Bar area. Mm -hmm. uh, the Marysville Reservoir was originally designed for, I, I believe, either 240 or um, 260,000 acre feet of dedicated flood storage. And it was de uh, designed with the thought in mind that we would have Orville to control the feather, we'd have um, New Bullard's Bar to control the North Yuba, and then we'd have Marysville Reservoir to control um, the entire Yuba. And that, that project was never built. Because of opposition, it was late into the game. It was by the, then it was the 1970s. Auburn Dam had got the kibosh. And... That's right. Yeah, just mm. it, opposition in general mm -hmm. um, mm. Uh, prevented its construction. Mm. So this new spillway helps make up for that, for that lack of infrastructure. That's right. Yeah. As originally designed. So to wrap this all up, Didi's give me the info on um, well, the way these floods are measured, Marysville is basically in a bathtub, surrounded by water, and you've got your 100-year flood, your 200-year flood, your 500-year flood. So right now, the Marysville area is just right around, what, the 200-year flood capability? We're getting close. We're still working on the, the levee there. There's still a couple of years of construction ahead of us to get to. When we finish the ring levee, it's expected to be a near 300-year level of protection, which basically means that, uh, you know, once it, oh, how does that add, how does that math go? It's a, it's a very small, right? One in 100 is the 100 year storm. So um, then one in 200 chance, a one in 300 chance. Mm -hmm. So whatever that percentage is. Um, so there's a, it, it will be at a point where there'll be a one in 300 chance mm -hmm. of a storm coming along at any, any time that could overtop the levees, that is stronger than the levees were designed to handle. Mm -hmm. And once we build the secondary spillway, we're gonna have so much more control over the flow into the river that we are predicting the Marysville Ring Levee will be upgraded to a 500 year levee. So meaning a one in 500 chance, mm -hmm. which is pretty darn good. That's some good flood protection right there. With just the, with just the addition, of the secondary spillway at Bullard's Bar. And one other thing that is so mm -hmm. important, yeah. no matter how big we build the levees, no matter how many extra pieces of infrastructure we put in to reduce the flood risk, if you live beneath a dam or below, I mean, below a, a dam levee. or next to a levee, mm -hmm. you should have flood insurance. It will be so much cheaper, so, so, so much cheaper. But we always recommend that if you, I mean, you, we don't have control. We can never truly prevent it, but we can do a lot to reduce the risk until it's very, very insignificant, but you're always at risk. So we strongly recommend that you have flood insurance if you live near a levee or uh, and, the and with these infrastructure improvements, folks should see those insurance rates come down. Significantly so. Excellent. Well, thanks so much, DD. It's been a blast today. It has been fun. Learned a lot. <laughs> you already knew a lot. <laughs> <laughs> She's never had anybody from the press come in here with I'm so many questions. I'm like, wow, you know a lot more than your typical reporter. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, that's been a guess. We've learned a whole lot more. We'll see you here. <laughs>
We'll have a special interview with Murray and the Colgate powerhouse operation in the next video. Stay tuned.